So I wanted to show you a progress video of kind of where I'm at right now. People get so mad about stuff, especially being on a medication for weight loss because they're like, just go for a walk or eat less. So here's everything you need to know if you are starting Ozempic. So the first thing is that you are gonna puke. You're gonna get nauseous, you're gonna puke. The next thing is that Ozempic is not a wonder drug. When you stop Ozempic, everybody's gonna tell you that you will gain the weight back. Getting magical weight loss results is kind of a fantasy, right? Like with proper diet and exercise, many people can lose weight, but it's not something that just magically disappears overnight. Diet pills have a ton of consequences and side effects, and you'll probably gain back all that weight if you rely on them. Slow and steady always wins the race. And that's the narrative that many people who have successfully lost weight have spread. But there's something new on the market, something called Ozempic, and it looks like it's an exception. About a year or so ago, it became known as a weight loss drug, one that genuinely worked, one that Vox called a game changer and potentially the future of weight management. Andy Cohen and a shit ton of actors and producers were even said to be singing the drug's praises for helping them stay thin and ascribe to those ever unattainable Hollywood beauty standards. Variety even released a whole article about it in September, 2022 saying that one top power broker at the time had half her call sheet full of quote, friends and clients wanting to discuss the risks of Ozempic. In just a few months, everybody knew about it. Celebrities, hair and makeup teams, producers, directors, literally anyone you could think of. And if it's good enough for Hollywood stars, then it must be good enough for the public too, right? Like this is an FDA approved drug. So maybe this was the solution we've all been waiting for. When we eat, our bodies produce a bunch of hormones to aid in the process of digestion. One of them is GLP-1, the hormone that tells us when we're full. This is the sequence of amino acids that make it up. And this is semaglutide, the generic name for Ozempic. It's made to mimic GLP-1. Here's why. Really, Ozempic doesn't just make you more insulin sensitive, but it helps you stay fuller for longer. And again, that sounds great. It sounds legitimate, right? Well, one little problem. Ozempic was meant to be a diabetes drug. It's not actually meant for weight loss or for average ordinary folks hoping to shed a few pounds. And that seriously changes things. Ozempic is the latest get thin quick drug that's doing the rounds on social media, but it's already causing a lot of problems. First of all, Ozempic isn't a weight loss drug. It's a diabetes drug that regulates blood sugar and insulin, which happens to also make people feel full faster, causing them to lose weight quickly. And because celebrities and now ordinary people have cottoned onto this, there's now a worldwide shortage. The irony is people who have taken Ozempic for weight loss are already having regrets. I feel like it's, it should be obvious at least that we shouldn't be using medicine for anything other than its intended purpose. Unfortunately, a lot of people were about to find that out the hard way. And there were even more consequences in store for the people that did need Ozempic and found themselves in the midst of a national shortage. So on today's episode of The Corporate Casket, let's get into the whole Ozempic story and try to see what exactly went wrong and if we can keep this from happening again. Even though stories about Ozempic blew up about a year-ish ago, this medication was approved to treat diabetes all the way back in 2017. Instead, what made this drug gain popularity was when Wegovy was approved in 2021. It's a drug with a higher dose of the active ingredient than Ozempic. And that's when people started to really see these weight loss effects and the results started floating around the internet. Now, this active ingredient that we just mentioned present in both of these drugs can lower the risk of cardiovascular disease in people with diabetes. So it's not just about weight loss. And while that might be a side effect, this wasn't approved for people who wanted to slim down. The FDA specifically said it's for adults with obesity and or weight related conditions. Plus those who have been taking Ozempic for years for its intended purpose know that it isn't some sort of magic bullet. Edward Matias, who has diabetes and has lost weight with Ozempic explains, quote, it's not the fountain of youth. It takes work and commitment. If people are asking for this med because they want to lose weight and they think they can eat anything at all, they're in for a rude awakening. 
As Matthias and other Ozempic users told NBC, it's helped kickstart diet changes, absolutely. It's given many people with diabetes a new beginning, and it's helped their hearts, but it's not just a simple diet pill. And unfortunately, that's not really how TikTok and other celebrities or social media influencers were advertising this drug either. On Variety, they say that the most enthusiastic supporters of Ozempic aren't pre-diabetic and don't actually require it. Plus, if you can't get a doctor or nutritionist to write you a prescription, rumors say that, quote, you can also score the drug at med spas in Arizona. Though it's not cheap, it's about $1,200 to $1,500 per month to get your hands on it. Fortunately for those who were desperate to try it, many doctors were willing to prescribe these drugs off-label to their overweight patients, as there really isn't enough evidence to know whether or not Ozempic or Wigovi is dangerous for those who fall outside of the FDA criteria. Still, as one doctor told the New York Times, there's really not the same layers of protection for patients that are just getting this online, let alone if TikTok persuaded you to try it. Quote, I don't wanna see people playing roulette with their health. And obviously, if the only real side effect to this drug is weight loss, then hey, maybe this is one of those prescriptions worth talking to your doctor about if you want to lose weight, right? Unfortunately, as all those trying this drug were about to find out, there's a lot more to Ozempic than weight loss alone. Probably enough for me to sound like one of those commercials if I listed it all out. And it only gets worse the deeper you go. Nausea and hydration might not sound like a big deal at first. A Tums and some water could fix that, right? However, the side effects of Ozempic can actually be pretty severe. People may need to go to the ER, and in rare cases, patients can get pancreatitis, gallstones, or even become malnourished. Quote, Doctors typically start patients on a lower dose of medications like Ozempic and Wagovi, and then gradually build up to minimize these side effects, Dr. Gabe said. And while I would like to hope that doctors don't prescribe Ozempic in high doses, if anyone was getting this from a spa or grossly uninformed about the consequences, then it's not all that hard to believe that people may not have been taking this exactly as needed, or that people were getting hurt because they were so determined to lose weight that they forgot about the other possible side effects. Plus, as diabetic patients genuinely need this drug to help their heart, they may be taking Ozempic in the long term, like for years. Whereas if you can take Ozempic for a couple months, enjoy the weight loss, then go off of it, you might be in for a rude awakening. Again, for those who truly do need this medication, it might be worth the risk. But if you don't, then it may not be worth the complications. Unfortunately, as more and more people started taking this medication, the more reports came out of stomach paralysis and other serious side effects. It really seems like this wouldn't have been as big of a problem if doctors were monitoring this as a diabetes medication. I obviously don't wanna badmouth any doctors that prescribe this unnecessarily because I don't know exactly how many times this happened or what the specific details were, but it's extremely frustrating to see a drug misused and to see such a giant impact on the quality of life for those that were desperate enough to use this to lose weight. And just out of curiosity, at least my curiosity, I didn't even know that your stomach could get paralysis. I didn't even know that was a thing. So I kind of looked it up and it's called gastroparesis. I probably said it wrong, that's okay. It is a functional disorder that affects your stomach nerves and muscles apparently, and it just makes it harder for you to digest food. And it also leads to like food sitting too long in your stomach. It can lead to a whole ton of problems as it goes through your digestive system. I had no idea that was even a thing, so just in case you were curious. But anyway, all of this is why Dr. Levy, a specialist in obesity medicine, told NBC, quote, this just further emphasizes, like many things in the past, that these medications need to be regulated by a physician or a medical provider who is going to take a good history, monitor the patient closely, and stop the medication if they have these side effects. Not only that, but reports of mental health effects rose the more the drug was prescribed too. Jenny Kent, who lost 12 pounds three months into taking Ozempic, said that she was in a constant state of feeling overwhelmed and crying all the time. The European's medicines agency even said it was looking into the risks of self-harm around the drug and evaluating over 150 reports. Wigovi itself actually has a warning for these behaviors right on the label too. And while the risk of a patient actually dying from game ending themselves on an Ozempic-like drug is about 1% in the Fayers system, 1% is still 1% too many in my opinion. I don't think anyone should die trying to lose weight. And no one should think that they've found some miracle prescription based on what TikTok tells them. 
The more a drug is taken, the more we know about it, unfortunately. And while clinical trials may not have shown these kinds of consequences, I think it's pretty clear that they're starting to rear their ugly head now. But there's still another downside to all of this too. Thousands of people suddenly taking Ozempic can hurt the people who have been on it for years. And it did create a giant shortage, one that's actually still going on as I'm recording this. As of November this year, 2023, Novo Nordisk, the maker of Ozempic, had to ration starter kits. And without a doubt, this is one of the things that I think I find the most infuriating about this whole ordeal. Like, there are people who have been taking Ozempic for years who want it to help their heart, but they're struggling to get it because celebrities want to try it to shed a couple pounds. I know I'm simplifying things a lot here, but it's so frustrating to see wealthy people scramble to get their hands on a drug that others need because of vanity. You people don't need it. Us, the diabetics, we need it. We need it to stay alive. Anthony hasn't been able to get his Ozempic since October. He says even similar drugs are now sold out. It's scary, honestly. It, it, it's, it's scary because, you know, it, it could cause me to have a spike and I could have a, a heart attack. And unfortunately, like with so many others here in the U.S., minority populations suffer the most whenever something bad happens. And in this case, the Ozempic shortage had a disproportionate impact on the indigenous population. Since early fall this year, Indigenous people in the Northwest Territories of Canada have had a hard time getting Ozempic for their type 2 diabetes. Novo Nordisk told Health Canada the shortage would continue until the second quarter of 2024, leading to some patients rationing what they have and ending up on wait lists. Doctors were asked not to put new patients on Ozempic too so the supply could recover and to recommend alternatives. Of course, as many other territories did the same, even the alternatives have started to run short on supply. Dr. Stuart Harris, the diabetes chair at the University of Western Ontario's medical school, who has worked with remote indigenous communities, spoke to CBC. Quote, Harris said there's good evidence the drug can prevent the slow and silent, but deadly complications of diabetes. That's especially important for indigenous diabetics who are more likely to develop complications at a younger age, especially kidney disease. It's well documented that Ozempic improves blood sugar control, Harris said, which reduces the risk of diabetic complications, including blindness and amputations. Basically, Harris and other doctors like him have said that it's very clear these drugs help people with type 2 diabetes, especially young indigenous people in remote locations. It can prevent heart attack, stroke, reduce the risk of other lifelong sicknesses, but celebrities are taking it so they just don't feel hungry anymore. And again, yeah, not all celebrities are doing this, but the attitude around this drug has been really lax considering the real world complications that are like occurring. Tabloids have accused Oprah of saying those that use Ozempic for weight loss are taking the easy way out. Entertainment magazines and articles have speculated who's on it and who's lying. And I've literally lost track of how many headlines that have said that Ozempic is taking over Hollywood. I support those like Julia Fox who say she would never take the drug because diabetics need it. I think that's totally groovy. But the outlets that feature her statement alongside other celebrities who say it's like a vitamin need to seriously reconsider what narrative they're trying to push here. Those statements aren't equal. And I'm pretty sure if you told a diabetic using Ozempic that the drug was just a vitamin, they'd probably laugh in your face or punch you. I don't know. Thankfully, as of now, I haven't seen any studies or news articles say that someone has died because they weren't able to get their hands on Ozempic. But that doesn't mean that this shortage hasn't had consequences. But the consequences themselves are still difficult to measure. As this shortage has continued, there have been fake and deadly Ozempic drugs on the market. We found these ads offering a so-called generic version of Ozempic with the key ingredient called semaglutide. We see semaglutide via Etsy. That's a problem. Uh, Etsy? Um, that's right. It's even on the arts and crafts site Etsy. And look what it says there. Not for human consumption. And yet it's sold out. CBS reported in early November 2023 that the FDA has had to look into these counterfeits some of which mention Ozempic by name, others just mentioning semaglutide, the active ingredient. The British FDA also seized hundreds of potentially fake Ozempic pens since January as the drug rose in popularity for weight loss. Of course, hearing that you might think that this is just some shady black market shenanigans for weight loss, and as long as you're careful in buying from a pharmacy, you're fine. But alarmingly, that's not actually the case. 
Health authorities across the country warning about fake Ozempic after a counterfeit injector pen was found on the shelves of a U.S. pharmacy. The FDA is now investigating the trafficking of counterfeit Ozempic. Our Paul Grown takes a deeper look at the, fight, the fast rise of Ozempic in America and the knockoffs with potentially deadly consequences. These have been found in retail pharmacies too, not just on Facebook or in other black markets, so to speak. And this is pretty horrifying. Imagine if you're one of those people that does have type 2 diabetes. You're struggling to get your hands on Ozempic or any of the alternatives, but you see some for sale near you and you go for it, only to end up hospitalized. Or maybe you don't have diabetes, but you're one of those people desperate to lose weight and going along with what all your favorite celebrities and influencers are doing. Seriously, this is a diabetes medication that shouldn't be messed around with or taken lightly. Even generic versions of Ozempic need to be FDA approved, and the so-called generic versions bouncing around the internet simply are not that. By now, maybe, hopefully, I've convinced you that Ozempic is maybe not right for you unless you need it for diabetes reasons. Most certainly not for you if you're trying to just lose a couple pounds before or after the holidays. But then if Ozempic is such a bad idea, how did it get to be so huge? And what has Novo Nordisk done to stop this? Well, that's what we're gonna discuss right after a quick word from today's sponsor. Give yourself the gift of insane savings this holiday season with Mint Mobile's best wireless deal of the year. Right now, when you switch to Mint Mobile and buy any three month plan, you'll get another three months for free that's six months of premium wireless service for the price of three. Mint Mobile lets you order and activate from home while saving tons on phone plans starting at just $15 a month. Seriously, I can't think of a better gift than turning an overpriced wireless bill into just $15 a month with Mint Mobile. Mint Mobile's holiday offer is their most spectacular yet. For a limited time, when you purchase any three month plan, you're gifted three, three additional months free of charge. This deal isn't just a holiday treat. It's a revolution in your wireless experience. Experience. With Mint Mobile's online only model, they eliminate traditional retail costs, passing those significant savings directly to you. It's their way of wrapping up the savings and placing them under your tree. Every plan Mint Mobile offers includes unlimited talk and text, plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Whether you're calling loved ones to send holiday cheer or streaming your favorite festive films, Mint Mobile ensures you do so with the best quality service. And the convenience? Unparalleled. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and switch effortlessly with eSIM technology. But wait, there's more. If you're in the market for a new device, Mint Mobile has you covered there too. For a limited time, they're offering six months of free service when you purchase a select device and plan. It's the season of giving and Mint Mobile is going all out to ensure you're not just connected, but also saving heaps. Switching to Mint Mobile means embracing a wireless service that's both premium and affordable. Imagine starting the new year with a phone plan that's just $15 a month, all while enjoying the same or better quality of service you're used to. In a time when saving is more crucial than ever, this Mint Mobile deal is like a holiday feast for your budget. So are you ready to unwrap the best wireless deal of the year? If so, head on over to mintmobile.com slash Casper. For a limited time, buy any three month Mint Mobile plan and get three more months free. That's mintmobile.com slash Casper. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash Casper. New customers only. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. When a drug goes viral, there are a few people to blame. Healthcare professionals should have never written so many Ozempic prescriptions to those that don't have diabetes. Many drugs require a prior authorization process, and clearly this is something that can and should be done for Ozempic. Anyone thinking of taking this drug needs to do proper research, even though that's clearly asking a lot from patients who are unwilling to consider the consequences of their actions. But the company that makes these drugs also has a responsibility to market them accurately and list off those side effects in an auctioneer voice at the end of their commercials. Novo Nordisk has been accused of failing to do the latter, compounding the existing issues around Ozempic. One Louisiana woman sued the drug company, with Reuters explaining, Bjorklund said that while taking the drug for type two diabetes, she developed gastroparesis, a slowdown in the emptying of the stomach into the small intestine that led to her vomiting and pain. That sounds horrific. And Bjorklund wasn't a random woman that bought this off Facebook to look better in a bikini. She's someone that took this for its intended purpose and still faced these severe consequences that she alleges Novo didn't properly warn her about. This is why we really shouldn't consider Ozempic or anything else like it a miracle cure. There's always a catch. There's always a reason to be skeptical and careful. 
Novo, on the other hand, has attempted to dismiss this suit, stating that they extensively list the potential side effects on their label. But this case, as well as several others like it, say that Novo is at the very least responsible for downplaying the possible severity. To my understanding, a lot of these side effects also happen during dose escalation. So while Ozempic may seem right for you at first, it can have the potential to cause harm later on. One of these possible harms is known as Ozempic face, in which the skin on your face can age and sag, an effect of rapid weight loss, basically. With Ozempic, it can be a bit more pronounced, which is probably the last thing the celebrities taking this actually want. Some doctors have given facelifts and other treatments to counteract this too. It all comes back to the point we keep reiterating. If your life may literally depend on this drug, then the potential side effects are probably worth it. Like, yeah, if I'm at a significant risk of a heart attack and this medication can reduce it, then I'll accept a more gaunt or saggy looking face as a result. But I highly doubt the people jumping into this purely to get rid of belly fat really thought these side effects through. And for those that may be trying to lose weight for health reasons, it's not worth risking your health to be healthy. That's counterintuitive at its finest. The only people that should be taking Ozempic should be using it for what it was made for, diabetes. As for the lawsuits, it does seem too soon to tell what's gonna happen. Frankly, I doubt that Ozempic will be held liable for people misusing their product as from what I've been able to find, Ozempic has never advertised themselves as a weight loss product. In that regard, I honestly blame the doctors that were over prescribing diabetes medication to people that aren't diabetic. Patients trusted them that it would be fine, that the benefit would outweigh the risk, and some were badly burned for it. Please, with any prescription, do your research. There is no miracle weight loss drug out there, so don't take this medicine away from those that really need it. But with all of that being said, that's where we're ending today's episode. I hope you learned something new today, and if you did, make sure that you're liking, following, and subscribing to stay up to date with all the latest episodes. As always, I really appreciate you spending some of your time here with me today, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.